cheeky back heel. With ease, Miguel Aziz, his first goal for Portsmouth. Into the path of Smith Rowe, into the box, Smith Rowe scores! A really deserved first goal in Huddersfield Town Colours. Welcome back to another episode of Away From Hail. And for those of us who caught me on the Canon podcast with George, thanks for watching. That was a great chat. Maybe we'll get George on here at some point. There was talks about that becoming a little bit more of a segment of theirs every once in a while. Whether it's this or that, it was a, it was a fabulous time. And I'd like to mention that I've started another project on the side, Yanks Abroad, uh, with a good friend of mine, Casey's. Um, we'll just be talking premierly a little more generally. So if you're looking for my takes, you like how I, you know, present information as non-biasedly as I possibly can, sometimes a little bit biased, but also always pro Arsenal. Come catch us at Yanks Abroad on YouTube and on every social media. We'll be doing that weekly. Uh, we've got a fun episode coming up on the Euros, previewing that, and then we are doing a big transfer window episode at the beginning of January, and that gets us to our episode of Away From Hell End, which instead of doing a player profile off the rip here, we are going to talk about potential January loans for some of our academy players, because there's a bit of a clog, for lack of a better term, because there's so much talent, and because some younger players have progressed so quickly, it's kind of left a bit of a situation that Arsenal needs to handle correctly. Uh, and so... You know, when usually you don't see loans mostly for 18, 17 year olds, it's usually 19, 20, 21 year olds that go on loan. As football progresses, we're starting to see younger players go on loan faster. And there's nobody, I think, who's more ready for that than a Mario Cozier Dewberry. He's made 13 appearances this year alone for the under 21, seven goals and two assists. He was on the bench in the in the Champions League, he was on the bench in the League Cup. And more than anything, it's kind of twofold, and I'm going to mention this for a bunch of these players. A loan for him makes sense because it clears the pathway for so many of our creative wingers to get more opportunities with the under-21s who have kind of progressed past that under-18 level, and they've already you know, been used as a sub for the under-21s, or they've gotten their starts here and there based on injury and availability. But a loan to a championship side for Mario Cozier Dewberry would be a great, great option for him. Hopefully, it's a side where he can actually use some of that versatility. He can Phil Lynn as a right winger, that's really where his, probably his potential is right now, but he also can be an interior, and I could see that being a huge asset uh, for teams in the championship. Next, we're going to go Lino Sousa, and it's interesting. I think Lino Sousa necessarily isn't the greatest candidate for a loan spell because he needs to be working mostly on playing as an inverted left back, and the truth of the matter is there aren't that many sides in the championship that are probably playing with an inverted left back. So. Although Sousa has 14 appearances this year for the under-21s and the under-19s, and he has three goals, and he's kind of advanced past that stage but probably isn't fully ready for the Arsenal first team, he's one where a loan may not necessarily do all that much for him unless it's to a very specific side. So it really depends on what they can find for him. But, you know, playing in that inverted role more for the under-21s may also work well for Lino. And there aren't a huge amount of left-backs in the academy who are kind of bursting into that role. So although he's one of the big names that people talk about, I'm not 100% sure we will see a loan move for him. On the other side of defense, Rule Walters, who has been on the bench for Arsenal's first team six times this season alone. 16 appearances for the youth, youth sides, one goal and one assist. He is 19 years old. He could use a loan to a championship side for the next six months. I think it will be great for him for two reasons. Number one, it will give Arsenal a good understanding of where Rule Walters is in his development. Is he ready to make an impact for Arsenal's first team next year? Does he need another loan, a full year loan next year before he can make that impact for Arsenal? Or, you know, maybe his future isn't even at Arsenal. And for Rule, the things that he needs to work on are not getting exposed at the under 21 level. It just doesn't make sense for him anymore. He needs to go somewhere where he, when he makes these kind of lack of concentration mistakes in possession, when he lets third runners in behind him, those are the kind of mistakes that he's been making at the under-21 level, and he'll pay for those at the senior level. And I think a championship loan for him where he can use his physicality and speed and show Arsenal that he has the chops in that level and also improve the other things that he needs to work on would be huge for him. Next will be Kayon Edwards, 20-year-old striker, 13 appearances so far this year, uh, scored a, lots of goals. He is the leading goal scorer for the Arsenal under-21s. He's got two assists to go along with that. 
you know, he's an interesting one because going into last season, I would have thought he would have at the very least gone on loan last January, if not for the whole year. Some injuries have slowed him down. And somebody who I thought really was going to have a chance of progressing to the first team, you know, his future has gotten a little bit murkier. I think it's key for him of all the names I've said so far, his might be the most important to go on loan here in January. It's clear he can score goals at this level, but can he actually impact the game taking that next step up? For him, it's likely a League One or a League Two loan. Think about Tyrese John Jules when he went to Doncaster. That's where I see Kayon Edwards. And if he can score a handful of goals and secure himself a loan move next season or a move away, that might be best for him. And there's a lot of attacking options who need opportunity. I'd love Kayon to go on loan specifically so Cheeto Obi can come in and play for the under-21s for the rest of this season. And so we can get a better understanding of where Cheeto is in his development. Next is Bradley Ibrahim, who's my favorite, my most underrated player at Hale End. As you all know, he's made 14 appearances so far this year in that center defensive mid role. He's been on the bench for Arsenal in the Premier League. He's got the physical aspects for senior football right now. There's no question about that. At 19 years old, he has those. The question is, can he translate all those things that I think he's so great at, you know, disrupting play, starting transitions, dropping the shoulder, the things we've spoken out with him, can he actually translate that into a little bit more of a fast-paced game than he's used to? And I think for him, a League One loan, potentially championship, but probably League One, where he can play at the base of midfield and kind of dictate the way a game is going and, and impact it the way I know he can, that would be great for him and put him in a position to succeed next year at, at a level that will actually show Arsenal that he is ready to make an impact when he's 21 years old. Taylor Foran, center back, tall, made 11 appearances for Hartlepool last year on loan. He's made 11 appearances so far this year for the under-21s. He's the kind of player who, he's already been on loan, so it doesn't really make much sense for him to play academy football at this point. He either needs to go test his luck elsewhere permanently or go on loan and potentially help Arsenal secure a fee for him in the future. He, there's no question about it. He's the kind of defender a lot of professional teams could use. He's no nonsense. He's a dual monster. And, you know, he's going to play in a deeper line. And so there's a lot of teams out there who could use a player like that. And there are a lot of young center backs at Arsenal that could use the playing time with the under 21s. Jack Henry Francis, another 20 year old who was really, really strongly rumored to go on loan last preseason. You know, two preseasons, preseasons ago, he had that great couple of appearances with the first team. And it felt like he was inching his way towards the first team full time. Maybe if he could have gone on loan last year, I think it was Birmingham City that he was rumored to. Never happened. He's kind of been off and on the pitch for the under-21s, a mix of injury and other you know, potential players needing playing time. Only eight appearances so far this year for him. I'd really like to see him find himself a club for January. Charles Sago Jr., he made that start in the EFL Cup, in the League Cup against Brentford. He actually, I think, impacted the game wonderfully. He's made 16 youth appearances this year, three goals and 10 assists. This versatile forward could fit in with any team who is not in the Premier League in English football. I would really be surprised if we don't see Charles go on loan. At least one of Charles Sago Jr. and Amario Cozier Dewberry definitely, definitely needs to go on loan. And Miguel Aziz. Miguel Aziz, just three appearances, totaling 97 minutes for the Academy so far this year. Over the last three seasons, he's made 11 appearances for Ibiza, 10 appearances for Portsmouth, two for Wigan Athletic. He has not been able to fit in anywhere. This is his one last chance to make that happen and you know maybe resurrect his career, which looked so promising a couple of years ago when he had made his debut for the Arsenal first team. Uh, 21 years old, as I mentioned, it's, it's kind of now or never for Miguel. And then we've got a couple of goalkeepers who were on loan last year or this year in Gratchik's point where they need to go on loan to clear out some space for some great goalkeeping talents that we have. Obi Ejahiri, he's made 11 appearances this year for the under-21s. Last year, he made 24 appearances for Chelmsford, keeping 11 clean sheets, and 21 appearances for Senajoki in Finland, making keeping nine clean sheets. Obi Ejahiri has to go on loan. He is simply too good for this level as a shot stopper. It doesn't appear necessarily that his ball playing is going to improve to a point where he'll be Arsenal's first team goalkeeper, but he continues to show his shot stopping ability. And there are going to be plenty of top clubs who could use a player like Obi Ejahiri in their setup. And then Hubert Gratchik, his situation's an incredibly bizarre one. He was sent on loan in the summer to slow town. Slough Town, Slough Town in the National League South. He kept a clean sheet in those four appearances. And then they brought in another goalkeeper on loan, and Arsenal were called Gratchik. But he has not played for Arsenal's academy this year. 
alone in January, I think is a foregone conclusion, hopefully to even a level higher than the National League South, so Gracia can get that opportunity. All of this, when it's said and done, is key to allow for the likes of a Jimmy Gower, a Maldini Cal Curry, Mikhail Rosiak, who we've spoken so much about, Josh Robinson, Ismail Ulad Mahand, Osman Kamara, who we spoke about last week, Omari Benjamin, Daniel Oyatunde, Chido Obi, all these amazing talents who need the opportunity at the under-21 level. They are ready for that step up, and it's just a kind of a clogged situation right now, which is really important to deal with. We recently restructured our loan system. Sam Hayball has taken over after Napper went and took Norwich's um, director of football job. So I expect to see a major amount of loans. I believe it was last season. We saw a huge amount of January loans. We saw some recalls and some reloans. I expect this to get dealt with in the early part of the window and not wait till the end. The only ones who might wait till the end are the likes of a rule Walters, uh, somebody who Lino Sousa, somebody who may actually have to step in for Arsenal in the defense if we don't make those signings. But some of those other names, I would really be upset to not see go on loan this coming January. And now to our players that are actually on loan at the moment. We'll start with Charlie Patino, who played just three minutes in that 2-1 loss to Middlesbrough. Very disappointing to see him getting so few minutes. Swansea City's a bit murky right now. Not that I... He's had a great season so far, and so I don't actually think Arsenal are considering recalling him and sending him back out. But it does remind me of the Brook Norton Cuffey situation last season, where Brook Norton Cuffey was on loan at Rotherham. And I thought he was playing pretty well, but due to some manager switch-ups and whatnot, they brought him back and sent him to Coventry all in the matter of hours to a place where he could guaranteed get important minutes and an important side fighting for promotion. And I think that was huge for Brooke. Charlie's been great so far for Swansea City, but I wouldn't be surprised if this manager's decision continues to kind of take its time over at Swansea that Arsenal wouldn't consider a Charlie Patino recall and loaning him back out somewhere else, or if things were to get super drastic and we really didn't bring in another midfielder in January, we for some reason let Partey leave without bringing another midfielder in. That would be the only situation in which I could see Patino actually being recalled and put into Arsenal's first team. But to me, that is a very, very, very low percentage chance. Then there's Brook Norton Cuffey. He played the full 90 in a 1-1 against Huddersfield, and he scored the lone no-wall goal. The last few weeks, the impact that he can make. He got on the ball in the box more in this match than I've ever seen from Brook Norton Cuffey at any level to attack the rebound. And, you know, just poke it home. He almost kind of kicked it into the goalkeeper's hands, but was able to score that goal. That was huge for Millwall. He does, however, need to. And if you're Brooke with his pace and power, you can go right around them. Arthur Oconquo is now back at Wrexham. He was at Arsenal having surgery done. He's back at Wrexham. And hopefully we will see him soon on the pitch, likely wearing some sort of protection on that jaw, but able to play through it. Mika Beerith played 87 minutes in a nil-nil draw with St. Mirren. He was 9 of 14 passing, one key pass. He had a shot on target and a big chance missed, but he did win six of his 11 duels. He actually put a little bit more off the left side in the first half of this match. He wasn't as through the middle. They, he's very versatile and so good at receiving in the channels that they've kind of used him to play off the striker. They've used him as a center striker. Uh, but when he is able to get on that ball in the channels, in transition, he is such a good creator. He should have had an assist in this match, receiving kind of in the right half space. And just getting his head up immediately, not dribbling at defenders if he didn't need to, playing a good through ball, and the attacker really should have scored. And, you know, he had a one-on-one -on -one late in this match with a chance to win it, but the ball did get stuck under his feet a little bit and on his weaker foot. You'd like to see Mika score those every time, but that's not realistic. And with his conversion rate so far this year, we're not going to get on him too much. But Mika really has been a shining light for Motherwell. I mean, he he's just been fantastic. And I think I've seen a lot of chatter about him on the timeline about what does his future at Arsenal really look like? And the question is, what does the striker situation at Arsenal look like, right? I mean, there's rumors of Ivan Tony. There's rumors of Victor Osimhen. There's rumors of Enkedia leaving. Uh, what, what happens with Gabriel Jesus? All these questions kind of lead to what the future of Mika Biareth holds. Listen, I do think there is a world in which Mika Biareth can make an impact for Arsenal. I think his array of finishing, his ability to finish so well and so clinically for a team who struggles with that is something that, you know, you can't pass up. You can't just look the other way. At the same time, I think his lack of running power at times, his inability always to use his frame to create and to hold off defenders and to kind of be a difference maker could stop Mika 
But I do think he is a top level talent. I do think he is a Premier League level talent. And that is good enough, right? If Mika Bireth continues to score at this clip and I don't know, a promoted team next year or somebody who barely stays up so wants to spend 15 million pounds on Mika Bireth, that's a huge success for Arsenal's academy. This is a player who grew up playing for Fulham, who Arsenal scouted, who did wonderful things for our academy, helped us play a certain type of football. He's had some injury troubles. And now is firing and, and playing in, in Scotland at the top level and, and scoring goals at a top rate. That's a huge success for Haaland. And, and that's probably the most likely situation for Mika Birith. But I wouldn't count him out just yet. Let's just see how the next six months goes. It's been fantastic so far for Motherwell, even though he's had injury issues, right? Like, his mentality is so clearly strong. He's fought through injury issues for the last 18 months. He had them a little bit in his spell at Arsenal's academy before alone. But he has a top mentality and he's a top finisher. And those two things will carry him to being a Premier League level player or at least a top level talent in a top league. Tyrese John Jules played 17 minutes in a 1 1 draw with Whitecomb. Would like to see him get some starts, I have to say. The way he's been playing and, you know, in these little few minutes where he's been able to get on the ball in games where Derby are either chasing the game or Derby are, are able to get counterattacks going, he's been fantastic. He was 7 of 8 passing in 17 minutes, had a successful dribble, and he played a crucial role in the build-up to the lone goal. He switched play out wide to a player who was in plenty of space, and that cross from that player led to the goal. He's a very smart and an all-around number 9. This is the kind of player that should be playing week in and week out at League 1, and he has those abilities when he's healthy. I guess they're being a little bit careful with him still, but I would be surprised if he was not a huge part of Derby County's run-in and their ability to get promoted back into the championship. Catalan Sir John with some great news, and that's that he is playing. Yet again, he's playing for Rapid Bucharest after a couple of months with really very limited opportunities. Played 55 minutes in a nil-nil draw with Petrolo Poliesti. 17 of 20 passing, two key passes, and two successful dribbles on two attempts. The key with Catalan Sir John is that he's still doing what we know he can do best, and that's being a very tidy player in tight spaces in the attacking third. He gets his head up. He doesn't dilly-dally too much on the ball, but he has patience. He has excellent vision. He knows how to play a pass with perfect weight into the run of a player so that they can create and score goals. And he did that very well in this match, as well as in the next match where he played 90 minutes in another nil-nil draw, this time with Farul Constanta. Again, my Romanian is not excellent. 26 of 35 passing, one key pass, had a shot on target and two successful dribbles again. Again, made more great decisions in tight spaces in the final third, being patient, keeping his time on the ball, and keeping his head up. These are the things that Sir John is excellent at. I'm not sure how that translates long-term to our midfield, but it does translate onto the football pitch week in and week out if he gets the opportunity. Alex Kirk and Keto Taylor Hart are still not getting game time at Bromley. Keto did make the bench this week, but Kirk is nowhere to be found. I'm going to assume, as I've been saying, this is a long injury and why we haven't heard from Alex Kirk. Nathan Butler Oyadehi on the bench for a 2 1 loss too late in Orient. Billy Vigar played the full 90 in a 2 0 win over Welling United. Omar Rekik is still out injured. Salah Eddin Ulat M. Hand is still out injured. Mauro Bandiera did not even make the bench against Wrexham after returning from injury. He is a prime, prime suspect for being recalled and reloaned out. He was one of the first players to go out on loan in the summer, and, and it's unfortunate it has not worked out at Colchester for Mauro Bandiera. And then Henry Jeffcott. He played the full 90 in a 2-1 loss to Southampton's under-21s. Of course, Henry is at Derby County's under-21s. And this was actually one of the... Worst performances I've seen from Jeff Cotton in the last two years. He played at left back and he just looked out of sorts almost the entire match. And that's not just to talk about the own goal he scored in the 98th minute to lose the match where a pretty easy cross to handle came in. He had no pressure on him and he just tripped over the ball and kicked it into his own net. He couldn't defend in 1v1s for most of the match. He kept getting his body angles all wrong. I think the lack of matches that they've had has really not helped Henry Jeffcott. I don't know how the schedule works for the under-21s and why it's been kind of all over the place for Derby in particular, but uh, he needs to get, like, the whole team needs more runs and matches in a row, uh, and, and this was not Henry's best performance. But, you know, that there's a reason he got sent on loan to another under-21 side, and that's to make sure he plays every week, uh, and that seems to be the case. So that's all we've got. If you like the content, as always, hit the subscribe button. Leave me a couple of comments. I try to respond to as much as I can. 
uh, on YouTube and on Twitter. I appreciate all the love that I'm getting so far. I'm really enjoying doing this and adding the highlight package. So again, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on Spotify, come join us on YouTube. Or if you're on YouTube and you want the audio version in the car, go listen wherever you get your podcasts. And find me on Yanks Abroad. Go subscribe to that page. If you like this content, you'll like that content. It's a very similar taste, but just a little bit more of a broader subject. And as always, we will be back next week with another episode of Away From Hail End. Happy holidays to everyone celebrating, and we'll see you soon.